Welcome back to DL Willie. Today we're getting back to the 224 build. Uh, we started this build in the last video talking about the parts that I have uh, collected for this build and uh, we discussed uh, what each part was. We started the tear down to a long block and uh, today well we're gonna pick up where we left off. Okay, so we're gonna pick up where we left off on this video and uh, take the rest of the engine apart, get to the inside so we can take out the governor and, uh, well, just start installing the rod and the other billet parts. So, uh, I know it might be kind of dark. I'm trying to work in the shade a little bit. It's really hot outside. And, uh, well, I just wanna work here in the shade. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the valve cover off. That's an eight millimeter and uh, Got my tools hopefully handy right here so we can get all this stuff done and uh, get moving on. <laughs> that gasket's been used a few times too many, but it still worked. I got a new one to go back on. It looks really good though, right? With the new black paint on there to match the original valve cover that came with the 224. We'll put this hardware in the valve cover. Now I've got new head studs to go in here. I think they'll work out really good. Let's see, we just lift it off. There we go. There we go. Get the studs out of there. Looks pretty good, right? Head gasket. Kind of messed up. Really dirty on there. But we'll get it cleaned up. And uh, get it ready to go back on. A lot of carbon build up. I use that Auto Light race plug. Seems to work good. Oh, look at that. You can see right where the detonation is. Where it hits. Boom! Right there. Go ahead and take the push rods out. Looks like it's oiling well. And we will be getting down inside and then drilling out that oil return down there in the block. That'll help the oil move about the engine better and help equalize the pressure in the block. All those good things like that. Now let's get this side cover off. Go ahead and take the nut off. Side cover bolts. Out, oh, check. Let's see how hard it will get. Oh, not bad. Listen to that. Those cars race down the main street right behind my house. Incredible how fast they go across that street. And there's no police out there to check them, you know? A week or so back, somebody hit the, the, the uh, stoplight, knocked it over. Pretty impressive. I mean, it probably destroyed the car, but impressive nonetheless. Gasket looks pretty good. Came off in one piece. These weren't put on that long ago. Uh, here is the original Hemi cam that we put on in our last build video. And this time, we're gonna get to the rod and the uh, the governor. That governor is going bye bye. Engine looks a lot cleaner than it did the last time I opened it up. A lot cleaner. Now that new rod, I know I'm going to be doing some clearancing. So, uh, yeah. We're going to get it in there and, and check it out. Make sure how much we got. What was that that just fell down? What was that? Something just fell down in there. What the heck? What's that? What the heck? What is this piece? It was just loose inside the engine. What the heck? 
I don't know what that is or where it came from. It just. Anybody of you know what this is? That's something. It just was loose inside the engine block. Wow. No, it's not part of the rod. You have got to be kidding me. What is that? Well, I don't know what this is or what this could be. Um, it was floating around inside the engine block, I assume. Uh, I don't know what it is. So if anybody knows exactly what that is, let me know in the comments. So I guess I don't need it. I've never seen it before in any of the engines I've built. Why would it be in this one? And I don't remember putting anything in there. It's got an oil hole. You can see it's got an oil hole right there. So oil goes through there somehow for something. I don't know what that is. Interesting. Interesting, really interesting. All right, so I've got the engine all broke down, pistons out, cranks out, obviously, everything. Um, you saw when this piece came out, I have no idea what this piece did. It's got an oil hole, so uh, it was designed for oil to go through it somewhere. And I've had this engine apart, and uh, this was not in there, or this was in its home, maybe. I don't know if this is part of the governor. This might be part of the governor on top, maybe. Yeah, that could be where it's from. And uh, it fell out when I had the engine open last time, possibly. I don't know. Or maybe when I didn't have the ar governor arm installed properly, this fell off. Now, let me show you what's going on inside. Can you see all these little chip marks? All these marks here, all these marks here, where well, that thing was being beaten around inside the case. Even on, even on the cam, there's teeth that are damaged on the cam. This thing was, was bouncing around in there so much that it, uh, it got against the cam, it got against the block. Take a look at the dipper. It's bent. It's been hitting that thing too. Huh. Isn't that something? The whole side of it's missing right here. Isn't that crazy? Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that or not. That is just nuts. Now, there's a few marks on here too. I don't know if they came from that necessarily, but there's some pretty good little chunks missing there. This, I believe, was machining for clearance. But, where is it? It's here. There's a big chunk right there where something hit it. Right there. That's not casting. This is casting. This is not casting. I think that piece hit that there too. Scraped it here. It's amazing this thing just didn't blow up with that piece bouncing around in there. And I think it is the governor piece. I think it's supposed to be up on the governor arm. Somehow got off of it uh, last time. Last time I had the engine apart. Well, it's not going back in there, that's for sure. I'm glad I found it now instead of later on when the engine exploded from that thing being stuck in there. That is something else, isn't it? Wow. And it doesn't look like this thing took a beating, but it sure took a did. Helicopter. But it sure was rough on the bottom of the block, the cam gear, and uh, the piston dipper. That thing is, that's something. I just can't believe that didn't just grenade this motor. Anyway, enough about that. I hope you're able to see the damage that's on the inside right here and right along here where that thing's been beating around inside there. I guess I got lucky. There's a chunk of metal right there. I don't know where that came from. There's a couple chunks of metal right there. <laughs> I'm glad I took it apart. All right, let's get to getting that governor out of here.
No more governor. That's the easiest way to take all that out. Now some people will just put the pin back in, cover the hole. I'll go ahead and put just a bolt in there. It's a quarter 20 bolt. We'll tap it and drive it in there. Same with the top. I don't mind doing that. This is a quarter 20 tap. We're just gonna get the governor holes. So I can put my quarter 20 bolts in there. This cuts them really easy. We'll just run it down. They're almost the exact size. So quarter 20 is perfect. Just like that. Now we got these holes tapped. I'm not worried about the shavings on the inside because I still have a lot of work to do on the inside. And uh, here's my screws that are gonna go in there. They'll go in just like that, a little bit of Loctite, and we'll be good to go. Put my tap set away and move on to the next part. Now I'm using blue Loctite. You can use blue or red. Um, it'll all do the same. And it also helps seal for oil leaks. I'm putting it on quite, you know, heavy. Because I wanted to seal and hold those bolts perfectly. Now these bolts, uh, I picked them up at Harbor Freight. They come in a packet and uh, they have a low profile. I like them better than using the regular quarter 20s with the, the regular socket head type thing. These work just as good like this. They give it a nice smooth finish. A low, like I said, a low profile head. It doesn't get in the way of things, although nothing will get there, but it doesn't get in the way of things. And these are three quarter inch long and they fit perfectly inside the block, as you can see. I don't know if you can see that. That's perfect. And uh, we've got a lot of shavings here, but we still got to clean the block out anyway. So I'm not worried about the shavings right now. We're still going to drill down in, in here. Maybe I should do that now while I put the shavings in there. Right? Just go ahead and drill down. I think it's supposed to be a quarter inch hole, I believe. So uh, let me get my drill and we'll get a drill bit and we'll do that drilling. So I've gone ahead and drilled down inside where the oil return. I drilled it out in 930 seconds. I couldn't find a quarter inch drill bit. I think 930 seconds, that'll be perfect. Should still be fine. Still got a lot of cleanup to do. There's still say, shavings down inside there. That's no problem. I'll get to that in a minute. Now I'm gonna go ahead and knock the governor sprocket off. I put the nut back on. I've got my handy dandy hammer. See if we can get it off of there. Just like that. Just like that. We don't need that. Should make a trophy out of that. That looks kinda cool. Get rid of some of that weight, you know? All right, so now I might clean the block up a little bit. And, uh, well, I need to put the, the ARC rod on there so I can check clearances. Because I'm gonna have to uh, clearance the block a little bit. I might as well go ahead and do that. I'm just getting my, my rod, put it on the piston, and uh, put it back in here and then measure out the tolerances and all the clearances and mark them and go ahead and, and grind them out and uh, with the cam as well. I think the cam will be okay actually. Maybe just the uh, just the kit the block. I'll go ahead and get the ARZ rod in there on the piston and we'll give it a shot. Mark where we need to, to clearance it and uh, yeah. Okay so I've got the rod bearings on I've got the rod and the piston reinstalled. Um, remember, when you put them in, you always want to make sure that little triangle is pointed down or towards the cylinder. You want to make sure you got your two dots lined up on your rod and you got your oil dipper 
uh, slinger, we want to call it, or dipper pointed down. And uh, I just gave it a little turn and I know we've got some issues here. So uh, if we come up, oh wow, <laughs> we don't, did you see that? It just made a complete circle. That's interesting. Let me put this on it and we'll see because I was pretty sure I was going to have to clearance that. This is my uh, OMB warehouse tool. This will align everything the way it's supposed to be. You can get a little bit of oil on it. Lubricating. This is the assembly lube. Put a little bit of the assembly lube there. And we'll put our alignment tool back down. And we'll get a couple bolts to go in it. Just to hold it where it's supposed to be. I don't have the cam in there, obviously, but that's okay. We're checking for clearances on the on the rod right now. I'll check the cam here in a little while. I told myself last time I put. I put this on that I was going to get the right size bolts, but I never did. So now the crank is being held in the correct spot. We'll give it a couple turns. The oil singer gets really close, really close to the inside. I don't know if you can see that. That is super close. I might just give it a little bit of clearance there just for the hell of it. Look at that, look how close that is. Comes around. As we come up to the cylinder, there it is. With this brace in there, it does make contact. So we've got our first contact at the bottom of the cylinder, right there. I know we need to clearance that. I kind of figured that, I saw that on other builds. Let's bring it back around. Bring that rod up to the top and we'll check it on the top. Hmm. It makes it on the top. It's really close though, but it makes it on the top. It makes it all the way around until you get to that bottom right there. So that'll be our first plan of attack. It's clearance there, clearance a little bit back here. And we might give it a little, little bit on the top just for the hell of it. So, uh, yeah. Let me get a marker. I'm gonna mark exactly where the oil tipper is right there. And then we'll grind some of the aluminum away. All right, I'll get back to you. Okay, now let's take a look at this. I have took my Dremel well, that's not a Dremel. It's a uh, Hyper Tough, you know, one of those Mart specials, but it works. It works pretty good. It's got variable speed on and off switch, and obviously I can change it different tips. I started off, let me see if I can find it. I started off with a burr and ended up with a stone to kind of smooth things out. So uh, I got it clearanced on the back back here where the oil slinger goes. I got a clearance up on the top and on the edge of the cylinder. And of course, again, I don't know if you can see that, on the bottom. And uh, it will do complete revolutions now without making contact to anything. It works really good. So I guess the next thing would be to check would be the cam. Make sure that rod clears the cam so I'll go ahead and get the uh, the other cam, put it in here and check it out. Okay, here we've got the cam installed. Everything's lubed up. Let's give it a couple turns. Oh, there was metal contact there somewhere. <laughs> see if we can get in there and see where it is. We'll clearance that cam and the <laughs> rod. One thing at a time, right? Oh yeah, there it is, right? 
right on the center of the cam. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. We'll take the, the stone and we'll grind that out a little bit right there. And uh, should be good to go. Looks like it's dead center between the cam lobes. It's in this area right here between the cam lobes. So uh, I'll take the cam back out and I'll clearance a little bit more and we should be okay. I don't think you can see that. If there's any way of seeing in there exactly where it's hitting. It's pretty dark in there. But I'll, I'll get it out right now and uh, we'll clearance it. So I've been working on getting the clearancing of that new rod. Um, I've ground the cam here in the center area uh, a lot, probably more than I'm comfortable with. I think now I'm gonna take just a little bit off of the rod um, so that it will clear. Um, it doesn't need to be much because it will go around it. So it's just very, very little. I'll show you, I'll demonstrate right now. You'll hear it go click. There's the first round. Right there, do you hear that? That's just ever so slightly hitting the cam. Right there. So I don't want to grind on the cam anymore. I know it's just a little bit. Um, with as much as I've ground on the cam already, I will definitely keep uh, the lighter valve springs in it. I won't go higher than 18 pound. I think this cam asks for a 10.8 anyway. Um, but I'll keep the 18 pounds in there, but I won't go any bigger because I've ground so much of that cam away. But it does go around right there. There's that little tick. It just barely hits. So I think I'm gonna take a little bit off the, the rod and uh, try to polish it. And uh, I think we'll be okay. Um, you know, it's a small engine. These things aren't balanced or nothing like that, really. So uh, yeah, I'll take a little bit off the rod and I'll clean up the crank a little bit. And then we have to wash this engine out really good to uh, get rid of all the metal shavings that's floating around, this and the head both. So uh, that's all I got time for today. Um, I'll come back at it again in the morning uh, when I have more time. So we made good ground today, uh, clearancing the block, getting the crank to turn, and uh, starting the clearancing on the, on the cam. Uh, we did, for the most part, get it to turn, but it's just, it's just touching it just a little bit. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and grind, grind it out, like I said, but we'll have to do that tomorrow. So uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.